Each week, starting this week, CNN will take an in-depth look at an important story. Today, we take a look at air traffic controllers. As you know, in recent months, the FAA has been plagued with problems in their towers, from distracted to sleeping employees. With that being said, we begin with another controller who's been fired, this time out of Seattle's Boeing Field. The FAA says... The controller fell asleep twice on the job, the first time back in January. Last week, two other controllers got fired for napping, one in Knoxville, Tennessee, the other in Miami. And there have been similar problems in Washington, D.C., in Lubbock, Texas, in Reno, Nevada. And, you know, a Cleveland, Ohio controller was caught watching a DVD on duty earlier this month. So, we were wondering... What does it take to be an air traffic controller? What kind of training do you need for such an important job where lives are on the line? CNN's Martin Savage is what you might call Controller College in Daytona Beach, Florida. It trains the next generation of men and women who control the skies. Hi, Martin. Hey, Carol. Well, when you think of Daytona Beach, you might think of spring break, but that's not the reason we're here. Spring break is the last thing on their mind. This is finals week at Embry-Riddle. Aeronautical University is one of the finest aviation colleges in the country, mainly because of state-of-the-art uh, simulator rooms like you find here. But w what I really want to show you here, Carol, is across the hall. Come over this way. Take a look. This is what they call TRACON, which is Terminal Radar Approach Control. And this is really what it begins to look like when you start talking about air traffic controllers. And all of the young men and women that attend this university here, most of them here are in the final stages. This is a rehearsal, actually, for final exams. But they just had a class inside here. This is a four-year program. You graduate with a Bachelor of Science degree, and you spend about $120,000 in tuition learning the very basics here of air traffic control. Now, keep in mind, this is just the beginning of a long journey for these would-be air traffic controllers. The class of 2011 here is going to be about 120 graduates. But when they get done here, they still have to be accepted by the FAA. But they're trained by former air traffic controllers. In fact, we talked to uh, Sid McCurk, who is a 35-year veteran of the FAA. And he says that the real goal here that he wants to instill to these young men and women is professionalism and to realize that perfection is not the goal it is the standard here's what he said there are tens of thousands of operations every single day an operation being a, an aircraft landing and an aircraft taking off um, this is a uh, profession where uh, the perfection rate is in the 99.997% range. Um, and not only is it a profession where you can't make a mistake, it's a profession where not very many mistakes are made. Now, all of this simulation is right down to the most perfect of detail. You see these air traffic controllers, they're looking at real readouts that the computer screens generate of aircraft that are in flight. And there are actually other people who are acting as simulated pilots, which they communicate with and direct them throughout the whole program, which can go on for several hours. It is a clear, just real example of how they train and try to train as real as possible. And in fact, how well they do with their final grade isn't based on that last essay question. It's based on how well they handle the emergencies that are thrown at them often in this very same room, Carol. So, so if perfection is the goal, I can't imagine the stress of the job, but surely that the students you spoke with there and, and also the, the teacher that you spoke with, sleeping is not something you should be striving for on the job. No, and, and this is what they point out. First and foremost, they will say, look, this is an industry of 15,000 people, and like any industry, there are going to be a few who don't necessarily measure up, but that is not a definition of an entire industry. And then there are those here who actually differ with the federal government's attitude on this, that being that there'd be no rest, no one paid to sleep on the job. In fact, they point out that, in fact, rest periods by air traffic controllers is a common practice used in many other countries. And they'll also say, look, take a look at long-distance airlines pilots. They often have two crews that work on a night shift. One sleeps, the other drives. Then they rotate in order so that everyone is fresh and alert for a very serious job. Yeah, definitely so. And I know there are congressional hearings going on trying to, to make things a little better for air traffic controllers. Thank you so much. Martin Savage reporting live from Daytona Beach, Florida.